Hey, how's it going? It's Kevin Kenny hanging out with Paul of Mute Math on a brand new episode of On the Record. I used to love you. I you got a new record out, I heard. I do. It's called Play Dead. Play Dead. It's been out for, uh, what, a couple weeks now, right? Yeah, just a week. Fifth, yeah. uh, fifth album. Second independent, though. And that's, you know, you hear, you read about that in articles, you hear about that as a fan. What's the biggest difference, though, when you put out an indie record or you put it out yourself, I should say, as opposed to a major label? It's just less of an obstacle course, really, to get it done and get it out. So we've enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're from New Orleans, right? That's right. We were just talking about this before we went on the air. I just got back from New Orleans. We did a shoot down there for Billboard. But there was something different about New Orleans I wanted to get your opinion on. Is everything like just had a heartbeat down there? Did you have that experience growing up down there? Absolutely. And it's why I'm addicted to the city. I've tried to live other places. And um, of course, we travel a lot. But I, my heart, it's like home is only one place for me. And, and I didn't realize it until I actually moved uh, it was after Katrina that I lived up in Nashville for a while. And within six months, I have to go back. But, yeah, there's something about the city that is magnetic. It's hard to describe, but it definitely has a lot to do with the culture and just the music, food, combination, uh, the big easy. It's, it, is, it is a laid-back city. It's just comfortable. Yeah. Um, That's a great word for it, comfortable. Yeah, so I enjoy it. We, we always try to find at some point in the process when we're making music – to create in the city. We've done that for every every record we've we've made. Um, we may not finish it there, but at some point, a significant portion of the process happens in New Orleans. It's a must for us. It's a main ingredient, sounds like. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. You mentioned Nashville, living in Nashville, which is also just a tremendous music town. What's unique about the music scene in New Orleans in terms of its influence on you? Because Nashville, is that's a whole music scene unto itself, and it sounds like you've experienced both. So what's unique to New Orleans? Well, I mean, it's the birthplace of jazz, right? And so there's a lot of... Um, the the traditional side of it is is definitely very inherent to the city. Um, I didn't appreciate it growing up, though. I mean, it was grandpa's music, and um, I didn't want anything to do with it. Um, I think the older I've gotten and, and the more of a, I guess, musical education I've gotten as I've been making music, I, I realize how foundational a lot of what goes on in New Orleans is. And, and the brass band scene and... Um, it's, I got to go to this place called NOCA uh, in high school, and that was where I really started getting a musical education. Uh, it's a creative arts sort of school. If you audition to get in, if you get in, you get to spend a half day at your real school and then a half day studying your art, whatever it is. And I got to do that for my senior year in high school. And I was doing classical music and voice, but it was an array of jazz heavy hitters i happened to be there the same year jason marcellus was there and Irvin mayfield who went on to be jazz legends and they're just keeping the banner of the new orleans tradition alive right now and it's amazing thinking back to that time we're 17 years old and what was so enjoyable is every friday you were graded on your performance you had to do a performance in front of the whole school no matter what level you were at so you had all the way from jason marcellus and Irvin mayfield and these doing jazz trios, professors are high-fiving in the background, and just, and then to guys like me who are going to get up and play our entry-level Bach piece that just kind of schlop through it. And it was great because it forced you to get past any intimidating factors. Oh, you can do you anything just, at that point, man. You just, you just, you just got to play in front of everybody, no matter how prepared you are or how uh, entry-level you are. And I enjoyed that. But I learned a lot in, yeah. at that particular time. And it was it was great just kind of getting thrown into the deep end every Friday. Yeah, to say the least. Become a musician, become a performer. That's awesome, man. Um, I want to talk about just the moment right now for Meat Math. Because it seems like as a fan looking at the band, this is somewhat of a – it's – I don't want to call it a midway point, but almost like a fork in the road, right? There's a lot of changes going on with Meat Math. And I wanted to talk briefly about the year that you guys have had leading into the release of this record and a phone call you got uh, last summer that I think really, I guess, shook you at the time, but you came out even stronger from it. No, I, yeah. It was this summer. And just, yeah, just a few months ago, um, we found out our drummer didn't want to go on anymore. And, you know, this is the guy who started the band with, so foundational member of the band decided that he didn't want to continue and it was right after we were planning to put out the record we had the tour in motion and also after our bass player decided he didn't want to tour anymore so all of a sudden half the band is out 
and I was scared, uh, freaked out, not sure what to do. Maybe it was the end. You know, we just we should call it now. How and close were you to that? Extremely close. Really? And well, for one, I, I didn't believe it was possible to find someone in the amount of time we had to try to fill in the gigantic shoes of Darren King, you know, the the, the drummer, and he's defined such a role for this band. And it was just daunting. And so, but I couldn't find it, I couldn't find it within myself to just quit and just walk away from it all. Not at this point. Um, and I really believed in the record we make. I still believe in it. Right. Uh, I think it's our best work. And um, I just wanted to give it a chance to live on the stage. And so, with a lot of tough conversations with managers and our agents and just calling drummers and just, is it even possible? And we just found one guy and it was a guy out of New Orleans uh, who I was in a band with 15 years ago and just called him on a whim, see if he might be interested. He's a paramedic, that's what he's been doing. He's a paramedic for the past 15 years. Um, and he had just started getting back into music, looking for some opportunities. And before I could finish the question, the offer, he was, yes, I'm in, and I'm whatever, in. whatever it takes. Um, I'll do it. I'll start practicing now. I sent him all the music. I was like, all right, before you say I appreciate it, let me send you this two-hour show that we need to learn yeah. um, that is just a drum clinic for 120 minutes. See, and see if you think you're okay with it. And um, he listened to it. And now we talk about it. He goes, oh, my God, it was so much, but I wasn't going to tell you that. It's yeah. <laughs> like, no, I can do it. I can do yeah. it, I swear. And he did. He practiced every day, and our bass player went and worked with him. And they just were working on dialing in the rhythm section just for three weeks every day, all hours of the day. And, and they were able to pull it together. And it, and it was um, it was exhilarating. It was scary. It was great to kind of bring this sort of opportunity to an old friend. Yeah. And, and we've gotten to get back on the road together and play music. And there's this deep-seated chemistry, I think, that never went away that I think has, has paid dividends to the show now. And we take the stage and it's, it's like uh, we haven't missed a beat, you know? And yeah. it's, it's been fun. It's, it's, a, it's something strange I would have never thought in a million years would have taken to this particular point in the journey. But now in, in the midst of the twists and turns that this summer and all the stress that it caused, I, I find myself feeling sort of appreciative for this strange twist in fate. Definitely. And, you know, it goes back. We, I said before that main ingredient, that special ingredient of New Orleans, and you, you always try to use some sort of element in, in your records with New Orleans, whether it be recording a song there or working there briefly. You go back to New Orleans with this old friend. I love that. In this time of need, it's special. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel very thankful. And doesn't, is it fair to say the theme of the record also kind of played into how you responded to that whole situation? Absolutely. So, yeah, we've been writing for the past five years, um, and it was also the songs that wound up on Vital. So the past two records was very much rooted in this concept of life after death. And what does that mean? And when you approach all these particular endings in your life, whether literal or metaphorical, how you respond to them. And all of a sudden, yeah, I'm, I'm faced with this certain vivid picture of what we've been writing it about. And... It's like, yeah, well, this is a chance to kind of put your money where your mouth has been for the past five years, and, and do you believe this stuff? And, and, and I don't know what's going to happen to this band. I really don't. I have no idea what the future holds, and it, and it could very well be the end. Um, it's certainly the end of an era and a particular chapter for this band, um, but what I've decided is I'm approaching this end uh, with as much appreciation and joy uh, as possible. You can't always, that's the thing, you can't always pick how things are going to end. That's the thing that life just kind of deals at you, but you can decide how you're going to process it and how you're going to approach it. That's an awesome message, man. That's awesome. Cheers. You're out on tour right now with a band that I love, Colony House. Yeah. Right? Talk to them uh, this year in Austin, Texas, South by Southwest. Love oh, their gosh. record. How are they on on tour and how's tour been going? They're fantastic. Yeah. They put on an amazing show, too. Right? Um, yeah, what those guys are able to do in the 40 minute slot that they have is is wonderful the crowd's been loving them and um yeah just pleasant guys to have on the road awesome music and the band roams is also with us and so it's been a wonderful wonderful tour and just kicked off right because you're going to be touring yeah, essentially through the week. fall right 
Yeah, our last show is Halloween. Okay, right on. Yeah. Is that on purpose? You like Halloween? <laughs> I love Halloween. Um, no, it was accidental. I'd like to was think it? it was on purpose, but yeah, one of my our favorite venues, Chicago House of Blues, will be will be ending there on Halloween. Right on. It'd be nice. We get to dress up. Last night on the tour, yeah, we do that anyway. Now we have more of a justification. And isn't Halloween big in New Orleans? They have the Voodoo Fest down oh, there. Man, and it's stuff the like best that? time to be in New Orleans. Yeah, Voodoo Fest is happening. The weather's perfect. Everyone can let their freak out. And it's uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful time. That's awesome. Uh, getting back to the record really quick, I do want to talk about this because this is pretty cool, I thought. Is in terms of the track list, you guys did something collaborative, right? Where instead of just taking like 30 demos or however many demos you're working with, you actually each chose three tracks that you really liked and then mm -hmm. you came back together. Can you talk about that process? Yeah, I mean, every album you're trying to reinvent the process a little bit so you can get excited about it. So right. It doesn't feel like the same old, same old. You do this, I'll do this, and you know, hopefully we get something good out of it. And for this album, it seemed like a fun idea to just let each guy in the band pick from the demo pool of something that you really like, and then you take it. You take it and go with it. Produce it out, go as far as you can, far as you want. And, and it kind of helped us sidestep the democratic process of trying to pick demos, which can be debilita debilitating sometimes, and we can't agree. So it was nice that each of us kind of just was able to lock up with the songs that we were most passionate about and get to create a case for it with everyone else. And everyone did a great job. I think um, the years of making music together, we built this sort of creative trust. And um, I think, yeah, we trusted each other's taste. And, and I think everyone knew we're trying to make a Mute Math record. Yeah. And everyone has become, I think, pretty skilled producers over the years and were able to manufacture the ideas that they thought were going to help the song. And after we played the work for each other, we all went away for a couple months. It was exciting to listen to those things. And, and it kind of reinvigorated us all to get back together and know how to finish putting the puzzle together. And then totally. we had a record that was done. That's so cool. Do you have any? Th do you know what the three songs you contributed were? Or just so for the, fans watching that are probably listening to the record as they're watching this. You well, know? the original three songs that I picked was Hit Parade, Pixie Oaks, and Stroll On. Okay. Um, but I wound up handing off Stroll on to Darren. Like I, it needed a vocal. And once I uh, put a vocal on it, I gave it to Darren. And Darren was real excited about it. And so Darren, that would wound up being one of the ones that he finished out. And I moved on to Achilles Heel. That's awesome. So it, at first it started like everyone, but then it started getting yeah, yeah, yeah. more collaborative towards the end. But those were the three I picked. Yeah, more bands should do that. It's a really cool idea for the, uh, for the track list thing. Fun, yeah. uh, where can people get tickets to the tour, by the way? Because uh, there are some tickets still available <laughs> for tours. Is it the best way to just go th across Mute Math's social media? Social media, and I think it all leads to MuteMath.com. That's what Okay, MuteMath.com for tickets. Again, the record Play Dead out everywhere. Stream it, buy it, do whatever you got to do. Paul, thanks so much for stopping by, man. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you